So you want to make multiplayer games, but where do you even start? Well, it's actually super easy with coherence. So let's see how to network a game in five minutes. Here's a quick look at what we'll make. These two characters are controlled by different players on the network. And as you can see, the character movement and animation is seamlessly synced between our clients. We're going to be starting this demo with the free character controller from the Unity starter assets. We've replaced our character models and dressed up the scene quite a bit, but the changes are purely visual so you can still follow along. So to get started, grab the Coherence SDK from the Unity Assets tool. And once you have the package, go to the Coherence menu and open the Coherence Hub. From here, you can configure just about every aspect of multiplayer in your project. Which might seem a bit overwhelming at first, but we actually just need a few things to get going. Starting with the Scene tab, where Coherence helpfully tells us the three things we need to add. First is the Coherence Bridge, which connects our scene to the replication server. We also need at least one live query. When the client receives updates from the replication server, it will only get data about network entities in this area. We're only syncing a couple of characters, so let's set the range to infinite. And this way we'll make sure we always get updates about every network object in the scene. Finally, to give our players a way to connect, let's add one of the coherent sample UIs. And for this example, let's stick with rooms. After that, our scene is ready and we can move on to our character. Taking a look at the player armature from starter assets, we can see it already handles input, animation and movement. But we still need to tell Coherence that this is a networked object. To do that, click Sync with Coherence. As you can see here, this added a Coherence Sync component to our character. And there are lots of network options here, but we just need a few tweaks. Let's open Prefab mode to make changes and click Configure. So now we need to decide what to sync over the network. We definitely need position and rotation so our character will move on other game clients. And since we have animation, we should sync the animator parameters as well. And lastly, we should decide what to do with components on remote clients. When a player joins the game, they will instantiate other characters from the same prefab. So we want to make sure that we disable any components that might cause unwanted behavior. So let's turn off all the scripts from starter assets and also disable the character controller and the player input components. The last crucial step of our setup is baking. In short, baking generates the netcode for our game based on all of our networked prefabs. When you spot this yellow icon next to the coherence folder, this means it's time to bake. Simply click that and wait for the scripts to compile. And now that that's all done, we're ready to run our game. To test it locally, we'll start a replication server. To do that, go to the Replication Service tab in the Hub and click Run for Rooms. A good way to simulate multiple clients is with multiplayer play mode. This is a new feature of Unity 6 and we have a full video about it which we'll link in the description. But for older Unity versions, you can build your game and run an instance for each player or use a plugin like Parallel Sync. Check the description for more details. So now that we're in game, let's create our room and then join it from the other client. And just like that, the character movement is smoothly replicated on our network. You might have noticed a small issue, which is that the camera and the character are actually handling our input before we connect. Let's quickly fix that by spawning our character only after we join a room. To do this, let's create an empty game object in our scene and attach a new script called Player Spawn Handler. Inside the script, we'll add references to the player prefab and the Cinemachine camera in the scene. To know when to spawn our player, we can listen for an event from the Coherence Bridge that fires after we successfully connect. Let's do that in the onEnable method. Then, in our event response, let's instantiate our player and set the tracking target for our camera. And finally, let's lock the cursor to hide it from the game window. Let's also make sure that we destroy our player when we disconnect. And that's all fixed. So it looks like we managed all that in less than 5 minutes. Feel free to stop here and play around with Coherence on your own. Here's a quick bonus section on how to get your game online in the Coherence cloud, so you can test it with friends. You'll need a free Coherence account to get this set up. In the dashboard, create a new project, 
and in the settings, choose what regions you want to use. Now back in Unity, go to the Cloud tab and log in. As part of our bake, we've generated a network schema which we need to upload to the cloud. You can do that here using the Upload button. And that's all you need to get your game online. You can quickly share your game by uploading a build to the cloud, and if you build for WebGL, Coherence can host it directly, so your friends can play it in the browser. And this is really all you need to get started with multiplayer. While it may not be a complex project, it's a great starting point for adding more mechanics, and we've networked it in just a few clicks. For more advanced examples, check out our videos about the first steps and campfire projects. And if you liked this video, keep an eye out for the next one. We will build on this demo and explore how to network a vehicle where players can act as drivers and passengers. So please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss it. Until then, have fun with Coherence and see you next time.